new chapter called social change in nomadic as well as in tribal communities so in india we call our indigenous settlers that means inborn settlers as adivasis and their communities are known as tribes so these tribal people by the government of india they have been categorized as the minority group in india so let us see about these adivasis and their vedic culture so the society started to be divided into varnas or caste systems so during the vedic period the society was divided into caste systems or varnas so in this caste system the adivasis were seen and treated as people outside the caste system so they were treated as lower caste people and though there was trade between the adivasis and the non tribal society but any form of social and culture exchange was discouraged so business exchange was there but social and culture exchange was discouraged among the adivasis and the non tribal people so in this image students we see how the tribal people look what are the sources of this tribal history so these adivasis or tribal people they never recorded their history in any written book only some anthropologists anthropologist means people who study about human society they lived among the tribes for few years understood their culture tradition customs and then those historians could write some books about these tribal people so those books are only sources of this tribal history next see about the tribal and nomadic communities of india so this india has almost the largest tribal population of the world and during the ancient period what were the tribes known by which names in india let's see they were known as gonds bhils ahoms gujjars manjaras and santhals and in the north of the jhelum they were known as gujjars kokars and bhatis so these manjaras were a tribe of nomads who moved out of the rajasthan and spread to different parts of the country so in this image we see the banjaran tribes and these gond tribes they were the largest tribal group in india located in central india they were also chiros people they lived in the present day bihar and santhal tribes lived in the bengal naga tribes lived in the northeast india and ahom tribes lived in the assam in the south india were badagas badagas were the na largest native tribal people they lived in the nilgiri mountain areas and their native language was badaga language this was somewhat similar to the kannada language and the goddess whom these tribal people used to worship was gangamma and hitte let's see about the nature of these tribal societies so these tribal people have some deep beliefs and practices what are those beliefs and practices let's understand so these tribal people live closely interwoven with the nature that means they worship the nature and believe that all the life living on the earth is interrelated with each other and they also believe in sharing the resources whatever they have among all the people of the society and these societies usually are egalitarian egalitarian means they believe in equality they have ties of the kinship or family relationship so the family relations are also very strong slavery and caste based system is generally absent and then widow remarriage is encouraged widow remarriage is not encouraged in a non tribal society right but here in tribal society widow remarriage is encouraged and the ruler is not hereditary always in some cities in some non tribal societies the kings are always hereditarily kings are always hereditarily elected but here the ruler is not hereditary and unlike the non tribal societies which have an economic exchange system these tribal system they form their self sufficient economic units how was the religion among these tribal people they believed in different gods some people also believed in a formless creator who existed in the clouds and the bhils group believed in a bhagwan or bholo ishwar that bhagwan was their supreme god and the naga tribes naga tribes had a belief in god 
who created the earth out of this water through the earthquakes and other deities were also there without name without form who used to live in mountains forests rivers lakes and they needed to be kept happy as they would provide all the resources to the people next let's see about the social and economic organization so these group of families which formed a tribe which formed a tribe they always had an important elder and he was the head of the family and this tribe was headed by a chief who was again answerable to the tribal council people and then what was the occupation agriculture was the major occupation so there was shifting cultivation or jhum cultivation which means the forest will be cleared burnt and then that land will be used for growing the crops that is agriculture was their main occupation and then later when the soil used to lose its fertility the tribes will move to another piece of the land and some group of tribes that is toda and todas and ahir they were pastoralist they used to do cattle rearing also and from the cattle they used to sell milk and meat some tribal people were also good artists they used to craft handicrafts they used to do embroidery and sturdy pottery and these products used to be sold in a non tribal area let's see about the nomadic culture so the banjara tribes and the lombardi tribes they were nomadic people nomadic people means people who travel frequently from place to place and change their settlements very frequently these banjara people were originally cattle herders that means they used to domesticate animals and they originated from rajasthan and these banjara people they transport grains from the villages to the cities and towns for sale purpose and these banjaras are also a colorful tribal group because the women wear skirts and tops with beautiful embroidery and mirror work till date we have banjaras and lombardis right where in different programs they appear in the televisions and then we see them that they wear different colored bright clothes and mirror work will be there on their clothes how was their interaction and social change with other communities so by the medieval period the tribal and the non tribal communities have increased in population and then many tribal people were, were absorbed into the larger hindu society and they were treated as caste people jatis or castes how did these adivasis contribute to the non tribal culture so these people adivasis they have influenced the various aspects of indian culture and civilization the practices of crop rotation playing of musical instruments such as bansuri dhol their art language seasonal celebrations all these things in later entered into non tribal society also how were the changes seen in the tribal societies by 13th century ad these adivasis communities they became powerful and important for example the golds in central india and ahoms in assam they became very important and prominent kingdoms and these people used to be in contact with other religious people also as a result their belief and ritual let's study about the golds these are the rajas tribal group of the south asia they in india they were mainly found in central indian region such as madhya pradesh eastern maharashtra northern andhra pradesh odisha and chatisgarh states so the place where they used to live the city was gondwana this gondwana is known as the land of the gonds these people were nomads that means they used to travel frequently but later they settled into a life of farming they practiced agriculture ahom people they are a branch of the taishan tribe this taishan tribe originated from mong mau of the myanmar country they migrated into assam part in the 13th century ad and their leader was sukhapa and they brought into india thai culture beliefs and other practices to the assam state so these are the ahom people